Hi, I'm Andre, and I'm a black nerd, and I know, I know, man, I know, it's been a while. <laughs> Look, here's the short version. Uh, a thing happened in the world, you probably heard about it, and it just changed my entire schedule. Like, I had a whole post-sonic plan of how I was gonna do YouTube, Twitch, some new gigs, some reoccurring gigs, and then once that thing happened, just all my plans got bleh out. So it just made things more difficult than it should have been, which made things take longer than it should have been. As you can see, things are different here. So it took time, more time than expected. But you know what? Doesn't matter. I'm here. Scoob brought me back. <laughs> I'm here to talk about Scoob. Maybe I'll talk about the other stuff some other time, or maybe I won't. Maybe it doesn't matter. There's a lot of bigger problems out there than why Andre didn't make videos for a, a couple weeks or a month, whatever. Anyway, Scoob. <laughs> we gotta talk about Scoob, and I specifically wanna talk about how I watch Scoob. Scoob, as you know, was a movie that was supposed to come out theatrically, but because something happened, Scoob was postponed. And then just all of a sudden, conveniently after Trolls World Tour decided to go straight to digital and got all this press about, oh man, Trolls World Tour is one of the best digital releases of all time and is basically starting a feud between the movie theaters and the movie studios. Who would have thought the Trolls would have done it? I'll have to save that for a future video. But because of that, Scoob just all of a sudden was like, you know what, Scoob's also gonna come out direct to digital. You can rent it or for a few bucks more, you can buy it. So I spent my hard earned money to buy a Scooby-Doo movie <laughs> so I could talk about it to you. I need to get at least $25 in ad revenue back <laughs> on this video <laughs> to compensate <laughs> for my Scoob <laughs> purchase. So we go through the whole ordeal of Scoob not being in theaters, not being able to go to theaters, and then Scoob now being at home and it then it releases while I was streaming on Twitch. By the way, for all the people who are like, Andre, where have you been? I've been streaming on Twitch like every day for the past month, twitch.tv slash Black Nerd Games. So I'm just saying, I do more game stuff than movie stuff there, but I am there if you're missing this beautiful face so much like some of you apparently are. Mm, I can understand, cause come on man. Thirsty, aren't you? I'm in the chat room and people are like, Andre, Scoob's out, are you gonna talk about Scoob? I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm in the middle of Streets of Rage 4 right now, I can't talk about Scoob. So I had to like block the word Scoob <laughs> from my chat room because I didn't want anyone to talk about the movie because I hadn't seen it yet. I try to watch this movie, right? <laughs> so you can tell I haven't done this in a while. Everything conks out, my computer conks out, my internet conks out, I'm like, what is going on? Turns out that apparently a lot of people are using the internet right now for some reason, I don't know why. And so <laughs> the internet service provider was like, we gotta do a system maintenance right now, right at the time that Scoob is out on VOD. So I can't get to the internet to see Scoob. Damn, isn't that the worst thing to ever happen in the world right now is that the internet is out for me and I can't see the animated Scooby-Doo movie from the internet. <laughs> what is this world coming to? <laughs> so, <laughs> I got my mobile phone. I can do a hotspot. I'll hotspot it to my computer that I can watch it. But apparently, a lot of people are using their phones right now. I don't know why. So when I hook my hotspot to my computer to try to watch Scoob, the movie looked like this. That's how the movie looked, just completely blurry. It looked terrible. I was like, I could not watch the movie this way. So, I had to go back to the source. I was like, I got the cell service from the phone. So yes, people, I watched Scoob for the first time. This theatrical movie, this movie that was supposed to be in theaters. Like I was supposed to be in a recliner seat with my popcorn in hand watching this movie. But instead, I watched Scoob with all the lights off, in my bedroom, lying on my bed, with my phone propped up behind its charger so that it can be at an angle so I can actually watch it. And I'm lying there watching this movie that was supposed to be a theatrical big screen film on my phone. On my phone, on this. That's how I saw Scoob, y'all. This is 2020. <laughs> but you know what? For this movie, 
appropriate. Look, man, the movie is not bad, okay? I don't hate the movie. I have no problems with the movie, but I can kind of understand why this movie went to digital as opposed to them holding off to it. Like, Warner Brothers knows they want to hold on to that Wonder Woman 1984. They ain't giving that to you yet. Everyone's like, oh, release all your movie digitally. They're like, not Wonder Woman. We want that international box office. You can't have this. But you know what, Scoob? You, you can go ahead and go. You know how some people be like, the Star Wars movies, the more recent ones, are good movies, but not necessarily Star Wars movies, but they're still entertaining movies? That is how I feel about Scoob. It's a good animated movie. It's a good family film. It's even a good Hanna-Barbera movie. Probably a great Hanna-Barbera movie, actually. I just don't know how I feel about it as a Scooby-Doo movie. I had to separate my movie self from my Scooby-Doo fan self because as a Scooby-Doo fan, there's a lot of things I could point to and be like, nah, that ain't working for me. But then I'm going, but who cares? No one else cares. <laughs> no one else cares. No one else cares. Again, Star Wars people, you know what I'm talking about? Anyway, the movie is a fine, okay movie. Here's the thing about Scoob. It's complicated. Relationship-wise, it's complicated. The movie is complicated. You have a story that is very simple. A bunch of kids and a talking dog uh, solve mysteries. And instead they went, okay, we'll make that a boy meets his dog story, as well as a solving mystery story, as well as a story about an evil, sinister, old school type of villain, and robots, and sci-fi, and superheroes, and hidden worlds, and demons, and relationships to classic historical or mythological figures or beings. Oh, and like 50 bajillion Hanna-Barbera references. <laughs> Scoob! But the movie was decent. I mean, it was just decent. The animation is tight though on Scoob. What I'm loving lately are these 3D animated movies that are doing the 2D animated style. Like this is the closest a CG animated Scooby-Doo movie would be to a 2D animated Scooby-Doo movie. And I loved, I loved all of the Hanna-Barbera references. This thing is chock full of them. I'm talking about characters in the movie, background things <laughs> like there's just all these references there's one scene that takes place in the arcade and like every machine every poster everything that was in that room was some kind of reference to Hanna Barbera and definitely watch the credits there's no after credit scene but in the credits it's like an animated credit sequence and that's another one it's just like HB reference after HB reference after HB reference they are definitely setting up this is a cinematic universe of Hanna-Barbera. It's just surprising just how many references they got in here. Like, I was really shocked. It might be a little bit to the detriment of the movie because the more that they keep throwing in the Hanna-Barbera references and characters, the less it gets to be a Scooby-Doo mystery. It starts to feel like it's basically Laugh Olympics, <laughs> you know, at a certain point, you know, but it's, it's still interesting that they were able to do that because they didn't have to. They could have just made this a straightforward Scooby-Doo movie. Some people might think that they should have done that instead, but I can't help it. But as a person who grew up watching these cartoons on the USA Cartoon Express, I just can't help but to be excited that this movie decided to have Dick Dastardly and Muttley in it or make references in the background to Squidly Diddly or Penelope Pitstop or Frankenstein Jr. But hey, they even threw in like, oh, there's a poster of like the banana splits, but there's like a poster of the Hex Girls. Like they use like classic sound effects from the Scooby-Doo cartoon. There's a score that is like a regular cinematic score, and then just in the middle of the score it goes, and I was like, oh shoot, that's awesome. So like that kind of stuff, I really dug. And they do something great with the intro. Um, very classic throwback on the intro in this. I see what you did there. And it was like almost shot for shot. So that was really cool. Some of the humor is funny. Like I said, they take this really wacky animation, almost kind of Looney Tunes approach to some of the humor. And there's some lines of dialogue that I actually thought was pretty funny. There was a couple of times I was like, man, you got me with that one. I didn't think you'd throw that joke out there. And there's a couple of jokes that will go over the kids' heads and the adults will be like, ah, I see what you did there. But another one of these movies where it just feels like if it can make a modern pop culture reference every five minutes, then we got them. This movie starts with California love. Like the moment you see the logo and the Warner Brothers song, Doo -doo -doo -doo, it immediately goes, California love. And I was like, did I put on the wrong movie? <laughs> and I said, I was like, whoa, shoot. <laughs> Are the Scooby gang gonna be black now? Like what, what is going on? It's all kinds of pop culture songs in this. There's references to Instagram and Tinder and all that stuff. Like it's just, 
It's just one of those movies where they just feel like they have to do that all the time. However, uh, no one flosses in it. There's none of this happening. Now, is there a dab? Is there a poop joke? Look, sometimes to lose one, <laughs> you have to get the other. It's like, do you want the dab and poop joke or do you want the floss? Okay, we will take away the floss, then dab and poop joke it is. That's just the circle of life. That's the balance of things. That's the, that's the Thanos of movie making. The movie focuses mostly on Scooby and Shaggy, as you would expect. Fred, Velma, and Daphne are kind of looking for them when they get separated for reasons. But yeah, man, them voices, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, Will Forte, you trying, man, but I just, I, I need Matthew Lillard back. I just don't know why. When you've got Scooby-Doo as your center, when you've got these characters that people have known for 50 years, I don't understand why they needed to replace a voice cast that is currently working on Scooby-Doo material with celebrities. I mean, they're fine. Uh, Zac Efron, I thought, was probably the best as Fred. He actually does a good job as Fred. And that's the thing, if you already got Frank Walker there doing Scooby-Doo, if you want to throw in one celebrity, I'm sure he would like throw a bone eh, and be like, all right, have some celebrity voice Fred as long as I can do Scooby. Maybe, I don't know. Even though the man has been Fred ever since Scooby-Doo came out in 1969. They were already there. You already had other characters that could have easily been voiced by celebrities, but I don't know, but you get over it. I, I, it it's whatever, that's a whole other argument in itself. I don't know, man, it's just a really weird movie because like I said, I didn't hate it. I enjoyed watching the entire movie, but there was just times that I was just like, but I feel like this could be better. And I think I know what it is. A couple days ago, before this movie came out, I was doing a Twitch stream, because I do Twitch streams, in case you didn't know that, in case you're always like, where's Andre? A couple days ago, we did a watch party, and we watched Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. And I had not watched it in a while, but I always remember really loving that movie, and watching it again, I realized why I like that movie so much, because it's a good Scooby-Doo mystery movie, and then they added that one extra element to make it go, oh, but this is how it's different. And I won't say what it is, but you probably already know um, but some people that we were watching in the watch party had never seen it before. So I was like, okay, cool, surprise. And they were like, whoa, when that moment happened, they were like, oh, shoot. So, you know, that's the thing. And then there's an element of this movie that also feels kind of borrowed from Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated, which I think is another great series in the Scooby-Doo legacy. As someone who's watched a lot of Scooby, I can just point these things out and go, oh. But then there's a Hanna-Barbarian Scooby fan. There's lots of things they did. I was going, oh, that's cool. Uh, bottom line. Uh, Scoob's a movie. <laughs> that's, I think that's what I'm basically trying to say. <laughs> as a family film, as an animated film, as a Hanna-Barbera movie, good stuff. If you're looking for a basic Scooby-Doo mystery, Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, man. <laughs> Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated. It just doesn't have that kind of mystery into it. It's a lot more sci-fi, a lot more superhero. I mean, you got freaking Blue Falcon in this. Although Dino Mutt looks awesome in this. Like, I love the new design for Dino Mutt. That's really cool. I'm sorry if these are spoilers. I don't care. It's a Scooby-Doo movie. If you're really mad that your Scooby-Doo movie is getting spoiled, I don't know what to do with you in your life. But there are some twists that I will not say. I will leave that for later. Honestly, Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island <laughs> is like $2 to rent on Amazon and like $5 to buy. If you gotta choose between the $20 or $25 Scoob movie or the $5 Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island and you're not really needing to see the new Scoob movie and you've never seen Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, then I would say that this video is about to turn into a review for Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. But if you are a Scooby-Doo fan, I think there's enough Scoob in this to make you happy. It's just not a hardcore mystery movie, but it's got enough of the love of not just Scooby-Doo, but of Hanna-Barbera that I think is awesome. I just think it could have been simplified to really play into the mystery element that makes Scooby-Doo so wonderful. And if you need a Scooby-Doo mystery movie in your life, then I recommend Knives Out. Because Knives Out is probably the closest I've seen recently to a Scooby-Doo movie. From a person that directed a Star Wars film. See, full circle, baby! Scoob and Star Wars fans, we're all the same. Aren't you glad I'm back? Are you gonna rent or buy Scoob? If you are, let me know. And if you've seen it, let me know what you think of the film. And just what do you think of this in general? Do you like this concept? of movies that were supposed to be theatrical movies now just being digital movies that you can rent or buy. What are your feelings about that? I mean, I'm not saying that you never wanna see a movie in a theater again, because I, I think we all do at some point in our lives, maybe not anytime soon, but at some point. But is this kind of neat that a movie that you don't have to go see in the theater right now 
you can see right at home and still enjoy it. I'm sorry that I rambled. I think there was probably like two minutes of Scooby-Doo actual talking in this entire video, but whatever. I think I'm just gonna talk in front of camera and record it and then whatever happens, happens and it just means more videos for you if that's what it takes. But either way, I love you like a play cousin. I'm Audi 5000. Enjoy your Scooby movie and I have to, I have to pick up the phone. Bye.